It's the Score North Twin Show. Yeah, today's game was was canceled. Some bad weather down in Florida. I don't know if you guys got that same press release. I did. Or they just decided, who cares? We, the regular season already started reason. in Korea, apparently. So it was supposed to be a TV game too. A <laughs> rare <laughs> Twins TV game that I could dip in on while watching college basketball. Judd and I were. I can't remember if it was our group thread or if it was just me and Judd texting about Twins broadcast this week. But why can't they put? Just put the games on your YouTube channel even, right? Couldn't you just run like a basic camera setup and have the radio broadcast and just run it on like the Twins YouTube channel? Trevor Plouffe kind of confirmed something that I was hearing, remember, a a few months ago that they were considering a players players only type broadcast. I had heard similar things around like New Year's holidays time. And it sounds, and Plouffe kind of alluded to that as well, if there'll be select things. I wonder... If that is like a YouTube situation for them, you know the Braves do that um, with what Chipper yeah. Jones, Frank Hur, Glavin, mm-hmm. and it's maybe great. Smoltz or something. Yes, mm-hmm. and I think they do that on on maybe an alternate um, Sp- Sports South channel there, like so Bally Sports Plus. Maybe that's my guess. Throw it on that, there. Yes, but but Phil's right, and and what what is really weird is like the Braves just stream their games with. A couple of cameras and the radio play by play. Just stream them. Just stick them on twinsbaseball.com. Well, YouTube. Put them on YouTube. Well, that's fine too. But it feels like it feels like the twins have gone backwards with spring training coverage, not forwards. You we mean because we because we now. can only listen on radio like back in the nineteen thirties? And not even all the games training? are on there. Ah, yes. Lou Gehrig and Babe Ruth showing up to camp in fine form. Babe Ruth had 73 hot dogs this morning. It's a recreation. So that, that's what we need. A recreation. There's a base hit. Oh, up the middle. It's a uh, great... Left, Lefty Grove here making his spring training debut. Yes. Every pitcher's name is Lefty. We're in the, getting the kinks out. Next up, Dizzy quite, Dean. Dizzy and Daffy. Deep the Wacky <laughs> Dean brothers. Great pitchers as well. Who was the other? Was Dizzy Dean, his brother was... Daffy. Daffy? Daffy, Daffy Dean. Dean. Daffy I forgot Dean. to show you this, Judd. Uh, when I worked at the Saints like 10 years ago, uh, yeah, what do you got? Danny McLean stopped by, the last 30-game winner oh. in baseball. Oh, oh wow. Danny McLean. I you forgot got, I had oh. this. We did a little spring cleaning a few weeks ago, and I found this in a in a bin, just a random bin. But yeah, the last 30-game awesome. winner. That's awesome. And and if I am not mistaken, it, it's um, a very fitting time to broach this with the Otani stuff. Google Denny McLean and gambling and issues. <laughs> Denny McLean had go. a lot of issues. But Poor yes, Denny. 30 wins. You know what? Now we dismiss that. We'd be like, who cares? You won 30 games. That's not a real stat. No, today we'd celebrate if they started 30 games in a season, and right? Yeah. No kidding. Oh, no, we'd collapse. We'd be like, oh my God. <laughs> All right, let's do some feedback Friday here. And gentlemen, we stockpile. Your questions from the Score North app, from the YouTube comment section, by the way. Thank you guys for getting us to the 1,800 subscriber mark on the brand new Score North Twin Show YouTube channel. If you haven't already, go click the like button, the subscribe button on the content that we're putting out there, if that's where you consume. We still have the Score North Twin Show on Apple and Spotify as well. And Chris Krolak says, very negatively on the YouTube channel, Mm -hmm. I am expecting very, very little from the Twins this year. What are you guys expecting from the Twins this year? <laughs> well, first of all, that's very that's why, Chris. Why are you like that right now? Um, I'm expecting a competitive team that has a very good chance to win its division. Um, would I have liked to have seen another starter put in the mix? Absolutely. I think this team, though, from a lineup standpoint and, and from what they're going to put in the field, health provided, I will say that, should be... Very, very competitive to good, to, to very good. Um, and the bullpen, yes, they've got some guys down right now, but over the course of an entire season, I think the bullpen was constructed well. So, yeah. And, and I mean, look, the American League Central, for better or for worse, it's not like it's like, oh, my God, the, um, the Royals and Tigers have really improved. So I think the Twins have a very good chance to win the division again. And I'm not that down on the Twins um, despite the fact I would have liked to have seen them add a pitcher, starting pitcher. Yeah, I, I would be 
kind of surprised why people would be down on the Twins. I, I understand in the last week with a little bit of a kick in the pants with these injuries in the bullpen and just pitchers overall, I, I do understand a little bit of cause for concern. That division's horrible. The Central is not going to be – there is not a lot of teams that are going to be able to compete with the Twins. And if everyone is healthy and this lineup is rolling and they're starting pitching and Pablo Lopez and Joe Ryan and Billy Ober stay healthy, you're legitimately talking about one of the better teams in the American League. I still think Houston is the bar. I, the, the Astros continue just to always be really good. They got Josh Hader. They have an excellent bullpen. Yeah. I think I think Houston Astros are still probably the crown jewel in the AL. But I there's there's no reason to think that the Twins can't not be one of the best teams in the American League. So yeah, I'm super high on this year's team. I think wait. I am also really high on this year's team. I think they win the division. They're definitely favored to win the division. And I think. I think they're they're for sure one arm away at the trade deadline from being anywhere near like World Series contenders or someone internally would have to step up and pitch on a level that maybe they're not currently pitching. Like Joe Ryan would have to put together a really complete season or Bailey Ober, which that door is open. I think both those guys have another level that they could get to. But one thing that I sense, and, and this is maybe coming from the commenter here and people like Chris that because they cut the payroll back a little bit and they may be a starting pitcher short right now, that that somehow overshadows the fact that they have the best left side of the infield we've seen this team have in years. You literally have Royce Lewis and Carlos Correa to start the season both healthy. Now, health is a question with Royce Lewis especially, right? But when you have a team that starts with Royce Lewis at third, Carlos Correa at short, Pablo Lopez as your number one starting pitcher. That's a really good nucleus to start with. So people need to calm down a little bit on the fear mongering too. They also have Ed Julian as an on-base machine. Brooks Lee's on the way. They've got some good hitters up and down that lineup. So I think to expect very, very little is to basically ignore the fact that you have two of the best players in baseball playing shortstop and third base and one of the best starting pitchers at the top of your rotation. I don't think the Twins did, and I, I think this is one of the things that directly hurts them with the, the fan base in general, not the passionate fans, but the fan base. Mm -hmm. I don't think they did a very good job this winter of harnessing the excitement. Oh, yeah. they fought. Like, yeah. overall, I'm yeah. not just saying spending. And, and you know what? It's a strategy. There's no question to say uh, we're not going to get as much from Bally's, and so our payroll is going to come down. But when the immediate response, right, to a playoff win, hell, a series win, when the immediate response is to sort of dial it back and be like, payroll's coming down. Yeah. That, you know, that's not going to sit well. So I, I think there's I think there's two things at work here. The reality of the roster is pretty good. And I think that this team does have a lot to like from a player standpoint. I don't know that from a PR standpoint, it was really handled well. And I think that's why people are sort of pissed off. Yeah. I mean, yeah. even, even look at the giants who like had this weird off season where they were doing nothing. And like, you guys aren't going to do anything to try to compete with the Dodgers or in the diamondbacks in that division. Then all of a sudden in the last like three weeks, they signed Matt Chapman. They add Blake Snell. I was like, Oh, wait a minute. The giants could be contenders. This is actually a pretty decent off season for them. Yep. Yeah. I think compounding, the fumbling and the PR move of the of the what the Twins did with the payroll and not going after guys really, and now these injuries that are piling up to honestly pretty important players, it it does bring a stew I think of Minnesota sports fans who aren't diehard Twins fans having having legitimate questions. I I do understand that. If they if 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 they're competitive, like they're leading the division and they don't make a trade and they need an arm still at the deadline, I think gloves come off a hundred percent. Right now, like. The gloves are on for me a little. I, I get the local TV situation is a is a baseball problem, and a lot of teams are going through it. So I do get it, but I do agree too. To buzz kill it the way that they did is kind of classic pole ads in some way, right? They, just, they just sometimes don't have a great feel for. Well, and Joe's new. Like I I think Joe thinks he's doing the right thing, but I think that there would there's probably a more positive spin that he completely missed. Yeah, and I do sense that Joe cares. Obviously, the messaging has not been right. favorable for the franchise. So, right. okay, John White says, I absolutely love the addition of Trevor Plouffe to the Scorner Twin Show. He's well-spoken, insightful, and better yet, self-aware. 
We're super pumped. He's on spring break next week with his family, but then he'll be back starting the first Tuesday in April, full steam ahead. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that was fun, you guys. Having oh, yeah. having Ploofy in the mix. He's It'll gonna be, be good great. just to have, you know, another another guy like that. He's he isn't Boone like they those are two very opposite personalities comparing Alex Boone to Trevor <laughs> Ploof. But it's nice to have a former player who has also been there instead of these three knuckleheads who had never been in a club or played and laced them up and stepped into the box in the, for the twins. Yeah. So I like that part. It's funny though, because I I thought the most interesting thing that he said on Tuesday was was the fact that when he came up and was playing for the team as a young player the clubhouse culture of the media is there to get you. They're yeah. going to get you. Don't say oh, yeah. much. Don't say much. And like, you see him now and it's like, and, and he was, was not a confrontational mean person, but yeah. it is remarkable how bad of advice players will give players based on their own perceptions of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's And it's funny because him and I have never, like we've kept in touch for 10 years or however long it's been since he left the Twins. Because I covered him when I was a beat writer for 1500 ESPN. And I always thought that he, he there were some guys that were just complete dicks. Like John Rausch. I could go up and down a list. <laughs> Kevin Slowey, it's kind of a dick. But Trevor had kind of apologized on Tuesday. He's like, I know Mackie, Mackie probably kind of caught some of that from me. And I was like, I, I actually thought he was very pleasant to deal with. Sure. But, and I'm sure there, there'll be a couple, we can tell some stories, which we've told on the show before too, that, he was surly with some people, <laughs> but it's cool that he's willing to talk about it and kind of take you behind the curtain of what it feels like to be a young baseball player and the media is maybe out to yeah. get you. Compare this to like Boston, though, or New York. You want to play for the Mets or the Red Sox, man? Yep, absolutely. Totally different story. Yeah, I, I, I like that he also said, you know, he tells players like, hey, they have a job, you guys have a job. Like, at the end of the day, that is exactly what the media is like. We have a we have an agenda. We have an objective. That I should say that we're trying to accomplish. You guys are baseball players. Just just help them out. Answer your questions. Then you're done with it. Like it's well, it's and not you can calculus. The smart players kind of use it to their advantage. Of oh, there's all these different megaphones that I can speak into, and I can use those megaphones to get fans to like me more, or to get media to like exactly. me more, and then I can have a career in media afterwards. And it's a, it's kind of a game that you can play. Or if I slump, they don't boo me. Could be that I'm too. liked. Yeah, yeah. Razorbacks one chimes in says, "Do Declan and Mackey ever check the stats?" Max Kepler is historically bad against left-handed pitchers and should sit against lefties. You had Kepler in against uh, lefties mm-hmm. in the opening day. Buxton was around 175 last year against lefties. He should not bat second in the order against lefties. He actually hits righties better. So, Razorbacks one, maybe you aren't looking at the numbers. Oh, huh? snap. Maybe it's you. So, snap. Byron Buxton, in his career, hits left-handed pitching better than right-handed pitching. A one-year sample as a DH with a bum knee, I'm not going to weigh that over a career sample size. Yeah. So, Buxton hits lefties better than he hits righties. And on the Kepler thing, like, it'd be great if it was like hockey where you could just change lines. You know, we got four <laughs> different lines. You're going to have to send some lefties out against some lefties. You can't just do full yep. line changes. You don't have enough roster spots. So, yeah. By default, they just brought it, and it worked out. Hey, patience worked out for them last year in the second half version of Max Kepler. They just love Max Kepler. So they are going to put him out there for if he is healthy for 145, 150 games every single year. And if that means 25 to 30% are against a left-handed starting pitcher, they will still use him. And, and he is, by the way, a valuable defender. So it's, it's not even like, if he was a liability defensive player, I think we'd have even more cause to raise some hell. But he's a very valuable right fielder. They trust him. They like him. He's going to get some starts against lefties. Yeah. Let's see here. We got, uh, actually, you know what? Razorbacks 1 chimes in with another one here. I like this one. I'm, I'm back on the Razorbacks 1 bandwagon now. He says, if Matt Cantorino is healthy... He will be in the starting rotation for the Twins by June. He has a higher ceiling than DeSclafani or Paddock. Much better swing and miss rate. This will be his breakout season, just like Scott Erickson in 1991. Bold prediction, I know, but he has immense talent wow. when healthy. So he's got, you guys said on Royce, he's got like a shoulder thing he's going through now, shoulder right? Strain. Yeah. He was. He missed two years with. I held. Or missed a year, or maybe almost two years with Tommy John, but do in the minor leagues, and he's only made like thirty starts. But 
he's not that old. He's like in his mid twenties. He has a his strikeout rate in the minors is fourteen Ks per nine as a starter. Mm-hmm. So man, if I if may get that, in. if I may, his stuff plays. It it does play. Yep, <laughs> in the minors it plays. We'll see. If there was a baseball sounder I could get for that. Base is stuff playing. Phil, when you were out last week, he just like randomly called for Ode the Joy when like I was he, I didn't have the button bar even remotely ready. There, it thank was just, you. Like, yeah, I, you know what? I thought you were on it, and if, since then I'm not calling for nothing. Declan for doesn't you. have a button bar when he's home. I yeah, have I think, a button no, bar. All no, you were you were not home. I knew that. I was in studio, but still, studio, there's like but you didn't we have, have the page. I use yep. one page for all like just the standard intros and beds. Like I don't have. Oh, the joy on that page. So I feel like Oh, the joy should be on every page. Baseball. Stuff <laughs> judge, plays. Judd calling for calling I mean, his judge. production shots. Well, I was going to wave the flag. The fans love when I wave the flag. <laughs> let's let's the viewers love when the flag goes. <laughs> so Cantorino, yeah, get healthy. Yeah. Yep. Maybe he comes see. in as a, if if he can't durably hold up as a starter. Maybe he comes in and he's a guy that's blowing dudes away late out of the bullpen. Mm-hmm. But he's yeah. he's got to get healthy. I know what uh, Royce on Friday also said that you know he would be a better. He has a higher ceiling certainly than like David Festo, who I assume will make some starts for the Twins when injuries pile up. Like he had, now does have a higher ceiling than even Simeon Woods Richardson, which I think two or three years ago we would have argued he won't. Uh, but if he can't stay healthy, or if they just realize, hey, we got to convert this guy into a super reliever, which I mean starters just don't go six seven innings anymore. Like we're building up. Baseball is trending more to having just bullets in the bullpen that can come in by the sixth, fifth, sixth inning and yep. just take over games. So if that's the case with him, I'll be okay with that. I do think on uh, in Patrick's case, I think he's giving up on Simeon Woods R- Richardson quicker than most. I, I don't yeah. know that he's dead. Like Patrick talks about him with disdain, and Patrick knows a ton about baseball. But I'm not quite sure he's going to be. I'm. I don't think we can consider him a failure by any means yet. No. Oh. No. Let's see here. JD chimes in. Says, "Well, I agree in part with Mackey's complaints about the baseball season opener being fumbled four in the morning in South oh, Korea. Yeah, no it seems like a bit of a stretch to pin the Otani scandal on Rob Manfred. How is Otani's translator getting involved in clandestine betting and getting Otani indirectly involved?" Well, that's probably not what happened exactly. Let's I don't think these guys are telling the truth. But he says, How is the commissioner supposed to have any control over that? It's an unhappy coincidence that this broke right after the start of the season, but blaming Manfred for it makes no sense. I'm not necessarily blaming Manfred for that specifically. I'm just saying, like, baseball, there's so many things. The off season excitement. Last week in the NFL, free agency opened up on a Monday. And within like two hours, you had Kirk Cousins signing for $180 million. You had all these top defensive players. Christian Wilkins over here for $100 million. You've got billions of dollars just being shelved out by NFL owners in the first 72 hours of free agency. The National League Cy Young Award winner was still a free agent less than a week ago. Less than a week ago because baseball has no structure in the offseason. So that combined with launching your opening day at four in the morning in South Korea. I'm just saying like, come on, can we get somebody else in here who knows what they're doing? And if I am, uh, if I saw this uh, correctly yesterday, I think there there was a report that baseball right now, not investigating Otani. So that is on them. Like, how do you come? They don't want to know, man. Don't ask a question. You're not ready to hear the answer. And I guess the Dodgers PR team tried to make a circle around Otani and away. And the reporters tried to like stick it out to talk to him, yeah. and and he basically said, "Have a good night," and walked away. Dude. So like baseball again, baseball is Charlie Brown, and their life is Lucy with the football. Yeah, yeah. And if you're like, here is here is something Rob Manfred has control over: the best player of this generation and someone that you want to be the face of your sport does not speak to the media, really ever. He goes, he, he's the most secretive, high profile professional athlete in the world. You can do something about that. Hey, man, we really, I know, like, Jokic in the NBA is kind of like that, where he'd rather just not be bothered. But you know what? Like, Jokic will hop on TNT. Jokic will go on and talk to the media. And I know there's like sometimes with foreign players, there can be a little bit of a language barrier. But 
we're just going to let him live in secrecy and wire four and a half million dollars over here and like not answer a question at his locker about it. It's it's amazing. Yeah, they David Sampson, former Marlins uh, president and CEO, who's also on the Levitard show a lot and has his own podcast, mm-hmm. basically said they will not do anything until the federal and all the investigations are complete. And then also it'll be completely up to Rob Manfred because there's no it's not like steroids where if you get popped, it's 50 games. This could be this is going to be completely up to Manfred and their investigative team that basically will decide Otani's punishment if there is any for it. Baseball feels so clueless, though. Like, are they are so so like, Okay, so let's say the feds find that Otani is on the hook for this entire thing. Well, he's going to get arrested probably at that point is baseball just gonna watch as Shohei goes from he's being scratched from the start tonight (laughs) reason incarcerated by the feds baseball just feels like and and look I will say I love the rule changes on the time of the game the pitch clock all of that is great but they just don't feel like they ever have a handle on things completely and when you think that they do it feels like they screw it up yeah I will say, if last thing on this, and then we have, I got one more, and, and we we have time, but we can do the grid. The twins are on the yeah. grid this week. So we can do a little grid. Um, if he wasn't betting on baseball, I don't really care. As someone that used to find online poker sites to have some fun on once in a while, you know, I really don't care. Now, if he's betting on baseball, it's a massive story massive or if his translator is betting on baseball with Shohei's money that's probably a massive story that's really the thing we have to find out is he this generation's Pete Rose right. well right? yeah absolutely Imagine. but if he was betting he might be I know but, <laughs> but if but if it comes back to him and it's not baseball you still have a major like problem oh yeah with the feds yes so like right, but that, but that's separate than like the baseball wouldn't have, that's separate to me. Like baseball wouldn't have to ban him for like baseball. Here's the thing. Nobody baseball has first. literally baseball has a precedent here and it is, we don't care if you're the hit King, you are banned for life. Yep. And he might, he might be. In the well, same but band. remember Pete Rose was banned for life when he was managing and had stopped playing. So that actual severing of ties, while it hurt, was not like this would be banning him for life during his this this would be the equivalent of shoeless Joe Jackson. Yeah, because he but was he, like what in his twenties? But if he this gets a hundred years ago, but yeah. If if he gets <laughs> yes. pinched, he's probably done playing because A, he's going to be in in a really nice white collar penitentiary, or I don't know if if he, he would be deported. Do you think well, but hold on. If let's say he gets, let's say he was betting on baseball, but it turns out that like, well, this is so intertwined. Yeah. Because they're because the sport you're saying the sports book he was using is it, it is a, an illegal sports book. It was, it's it like was an a, underground sports. It was, book. It was a, a book, book maker, right? It's not yeah. a book. Yeah, yeah. it's not yeah. legal. So it wasn't like an offshore uh, online account. It was like he was going million, through, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, obviously like that's. But let's let's say somehow he gets cleared of that, but it's also deemed that he was betting on baseball. Which I guess if he's deemed to bet on baseball, I guess he would then he also be cleared. filing the bets through this illegal sportsbook. But correct. I don't I don't know that they would have the balls to ban him for life. I feel like they'd have to they'd have to like suspend him for a year and then reinstate Pete Rose <laughs> and say okay, we've softened our stance on this because we have partnerships with DraftKings and FanDuel and all these places, but. What a wild story, man. But if he had only used FanDuel. Well, <laughs> Shohei Otani Cal- here for but FanDuel. But it's illegal in California. It is. There's yeah. no sports books right. in California. There- right. Yeah. You can't use it in California. Okay, so what, what we have to do then is get him traded to a state where where he, he can use a baseball-approved bookie. <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah, that, they're going to demand him to be traded to, um, I'm trying to think, Iowa, right? We can go to Iowa. Shohei no Otani here for Underdog <laughs> he can, Sports. Me he can live Declan, in Iowa and drive to Target Field. My buddy mm-hmm. and I, Declan Goff, we're betting all the time. Okay, Iron Swish 777 says, I'm an avid Royals fan that loves to play fantasy baseball and seems to end up with several twins on my team each season. Love your guys' enthusiasm about the twins. I watch your show on a regular basis, even though I'm a Royals fan. I'll be up in Minneapolis the end of May to catch a game at Target Field. Any recommendations on restaurants near the ballpark? 
Well, Three Jack is a partner of ours on Purple Daily, so check out Three Jack. But I mean, O'Donovan's, a couple of good Irish pubs nearby, mm-hmm. Kieran's, mm-hmm. JD Hoyt's, Red Rabbit, if you're looking Ooh. for a good dinner. JD Hoyt's. Smack Shack. Love me some Smack Shack. It's a good one. Mm-hmm. A lot of good Those breweries. Are... Yeah. It's a great it's a great spot. Yeah. Ballpark. No rec- Judd, you good? No recommendations from you? No, I mean you. You guys just brought brought up like five great ones. What What's the one I uh, th- that Patrick said he he went to the nice restaurant a couple. Of oh, nights. Porzana. 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 Like yeah. like if you want to go great bar, so good. fantastic food, Porzana. Whew. Mason Margot next door. Oh, inject. I've been to both recently. So good. Got a little brunch there at uh, Mason Margot. Very yeah. very. Solid. There's it's a great food city, so you you really can't go wrong with too many places. So should we do the grid here before we before sure. we wrap this podcast? The Twins were on the grid actually on St. Patty's Day, and we kind of say if they're on the grid once a week, we might as well stockpile and save. So before we get into this, and this is – and Judd, you're going to like this. It's an all-teams version of the Immaculate Grid. This is awesome. Glad to see it back. No stat categories. But, hey, if you're looking for Twins tickets, so obviously opening day at Target Field is coming up here April 4th, 310 against the Guardians. The first 10,000 fans through the gates will receive an opening weekend beanie presented by your local Northland Ford dealers. Royce Lewis, Byron Buxton, Pablo Lopez, Carlos Correa. Secure your spot at Target Field. Twins.com slash tickets. That's twins.com slash tickets. Okay, so we're looking for a twin who was a Dodger, a twin who was a Pirate, a twin who was a Cardinal, a Mariner who was a Dodger, a Mariner who was a Pirate, and a Mariner who was a Cardinal, and then an Astro who was a Dodger, Astro who was a Pirate, Astro who was a Cardinal. Mm. Could also go a Senator who was any of those things in place of Twins if you... That's true. You want to go back, so... Let's start with uh, the Twins column here, boys. Nick Punto fits for both the Dodgers and the Cardinals. And the Cardinals, yep. Mm-hmm. Dave, Gold, uh, Dave Golds back in the day was... Uh... Who who was the slappy outfielder who was like involved in the smelter trade, Declan? Who I think played for the smelter trade. Well, smelter, smelter. Logan Forsyth was in the Dozier trade. Yep, that's right. That's it. He that's was a right. Dodger, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. He came from the Dodgers. Um, that might be it, Logan Forsyth. Because he just had a very brief stay at the end of that season. Yeah, those are the ones we're if we're looking for a rarity score. Yeah, th- that Old or a school bullpen and pass through obscured. or a bullpen arm. PJ uh, PJ Walters was the car- the Cardinals. Did he play for the Cardinals or did he I come from their system? Yeah, see, that's like Smelter. I don't think was a Dodger ever. Can I? Okay, can I just because it's a it's a semantic thing. PJ Walters would be like point zero one percent if he pitched an inning for the Cardinals, or we we can't no, look you that can't up. Look, you can't can't look at so that. What, what are you but about? I I think you're right, Phil. I. I I'm pretty sure he did. I am, too. He pitched, like, one part of a year for the Cardinals and then came to the Twins via either oh, waivers or Rule 5. Do it. Let's do and it. He, and, he, and I remember writing, a, he had a great curveball, but that was about it. <laughs> Let's rip the bandit off. There he is. P.J. Walters. Oh, .07. .07. Oh, with the Nationals cap on. <laughs> oh, so he did play. He played for the Nationals, too. Oh, that's hilarious. Okay. All right, twin Dodger, twin Dodger. I mean, can we beat Logan Forsyth? I'm trying to think of like uh, Coomer, the Coom Dog, more I think the Coom Dog, Logan Forsyth, uh, Mark Guthrie, Mark Guthrie of the the '90s reliever. I love Minkiewicz. Mark Minkiewicz. Minkiewicz did go to the Dodgers, mm-hmm. and also the Pirates, and also the Pirates. Could use him as a pirate. Should we use as well? Minkiewicz as a pirate here? Sure. Who did I? Who did I say? I said uh, for the Dougie Dodgers. baseball right there. This will be right. Be one percent, two percent. Okay, that's not bad. What did I say? For, for uh, we have Forsyth, uh, Mark Guthrie. Yeah, yep. pitch for the Dodgers. Dave Goltz. Dave Goltz. From the seventies, pitch for the Dodgers. Kind and Punto, we could use guy. Punto here. I think Forsyth might be our guy. Yeah, let's do Forsyth. Logan Forsyth, 1%, 0.5. 0.8. 0.8. Okay, so we're, okay. Um, Pick another, pick another. Uh, Zach Duke 
the Twins reliever also. He spent a good chunk of time with the Pirates, and I think he went from the Twins to Seattle. the Mariners. He did. So he would work <sighs> as a Pirate Mariner. He I have another one that may or may not be... For Pirate Mariner, I have another obscure one. Okay. Judd and I are guilty, or at least I am, of instead of saying Blake Snell, we say, Ian and I Snell. say Ian Snell. Ian Snell pitched for both the Pirates and the Mariners. Okay. I think also, <laughs> so. by the way, I think Zach Duke was also a Cardinal, so he would. He was, he was a Cardinal. So he would work for a Cardinal. All right. Zach Duke was a Cardinal. Okay. So let's do a Cardinal yep, Mariner for Duke. Zach Duke. Zach Duke. The Duke. Point three. And then right. Ian Snell. Yeah. Snell. Snell. My, the, I will say this might be a little high because he was actually a Pirates prospect, right? Ian Snell isn't a bad pitcher. All right. One. Only That's one percent. Bad. Nice. That's not bad. That's not That's bad at all. A Dodger Mariner. D. Gordon for sure. Yeah. Adrian Beltre. Did Carlos Silva go to the Dodgers? I don't know. That I don't oh, remember. God. I'm trying to remember from like the 70s, like the original Mariners teams. If there's anyone that... Yeah, 77. I believe a, a pitcher that the Twins once drafted, Tim Belcher, Tim was Belcher. a 1990s Dodger and Mariner. Oh, I think that's right. Twins did, yeah, Twins drafted him and Odeby McDowell, I think, in the same draft and failed to sign both. I'm good with Tim Belcher if you guys are confident. Tim in it. Belcher is a good pitcher. Yep. Timmy Belcher. Yep. I'm almost that, that happened also correct. with nice. 2%. 2%. 2%. Yeah, that happened good. with what's his Ooh, name? That's name. That's um, right. Not Derek Lee, but oh, the other Lee, the Rays uh, Lee. Travis Lee. Travis Lee. Didn't they draft Travis Lee? And yeah, he but didn't Terry sign Rock, he was a they, first round they, pick. They screwed, they screwed the uh, paperwork up on him. A Mar oh, we already did. Uh, uh, I had another Mariner didn't? one. Didn't Lariano at the end go to the Astros? Because he'd be a pirate Astro. I think he did. I believe that is true. So Lariano's an option. Might be a good one. Let me think about this. I'm trying to think of... I feel like there are some 90s connections here. Uh, Dougie Drayback, wasn't he both an Astro and a pirate? Yeah, he was for sure a pirate because he was a good pit pitcher there. Uh Daryl Kyle was Darryl an Kyle. Astro and Cardinal before he uh, he died yes. in, in the Chicago Weston. Daryl Kyle. To this day, they still won't say which room. Should we go with Daryl Kyle? How do you, uh, is it E? It's K, is it? It's uh. Yeah, just um, put Kyle K K Y L E right. Yep, Daryl Kyle. It's gonna be a lot of Kyles though. There's a lot of Kyles that have played Major League Baseball. That's true. <laughs> uh, D, try D A D A R R, right? R. I'm just gonna Google Daryl Kyle. Okay, we're like we're we're gonna we're gonna use him. Daryl Kyle. No. It's D A R R Y L. Oh, it's K I L E. K I L E is his last. Got it. Daryl Kyle. Yeah. Five percent. Kyle. Oh, okay. Type in Adam. Kyle Loach. Yeah. Um. Okay. 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 So, who was the Astro Pirate? What did we say? I said Larry. I said Lariano. I you think guys you're right said, about that. Okay. Yeah. A few other ones. We can go Lariano. Well, Frankie. Yeah. Because it like wasn't he with the Astros during the trap, like right before yeah. the trash banging. Yeah. One percent. Oh wow, we got a good grid here. Well, okay. Frankie. And what are we at right now? We're at one. We're at six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We're flirting with a. Like a 12 here, if we can get an obscure. Granky is weight is the most popular pick, probably for sure. I'm trying yeah, to think. Number one. Uh, Any gosh. bullpen guys here? I don't know if Michael Bourne, I don't think he played for the Dodgers. I'm trying to think of those horrible Astros teams before they popped back up. Some random guys. Oh, did. Okay. Did Joe John Morgan Singleton play for the Dodgers? Oh, John Singleton. Did he? Oh, uh, I might be wrong. I, on that. I'm not he sure. He was on A's. That. He was A's. A's for sure. Nelson Cruz never played for the Dodgers or the. No. He didn't play for the Lions team. Astros, no. no. Um, Who are some other like? I'm trying to think of twins that have kind of moved through. Marwin Gonzalez, I don't think ended up Impressive. with the Dodgers. No, he went to the Yankees. I think Yankees, he went to Red Sox. Red Sox. Even. Yeah, I think he finished with the Red Sox. 
Punto never played for the Astros, huh? No. No. Dozier didn't. Um, Catchers. Kurt Suzuki? No. I don't think so. Oh, boy. I don't want to use Greinke. It's going to kill us. Yeah, um, Greinke's going to be super high. Sean Green didn't go. That would still be high, even if he did. Sean, Sean Green. Green. Oh. Um. I was like, O-Dog? Did Orlando Hudson go to the Astros at He all? was Dodgers for sure Dodgers. Dodgers for sure before the Twins. He played for like seven different teams. I don't think what about that, What about... Um, I don't know if this is an Edwin Jackson square. I was going to say Ed, Edwin Jackson, or I'm trying to think of the other go-tos. Rich Hill, is play, he's also entered... Uh, he's played for like Dodger. 15 teams. He's for sure a Dodger. Was he an Astro? I don't know. Did, uh, I'm trying to think of other guys like that. Jesse Orozco, Mike Morgan. Mike Morgan would have been a Mariner and a and a Dodger, oh, boy. and a Twin, and a, and a Twin and a Cub, and a Cardinal. <laughs> yeah, I think. he was. The, I think he was the second starter for a while behind Mad Dog, right in Chicago, Phil. Yep. Terry Mulholland. Terry Mulholland. Ooh, and, that's a. Ooh. Steve Bedrosian. It was not a. Did Steve Sachs play for the Astros? Uh uh-uh. uh. He was white, he white, finished. Dodgers, White Sox. Yankees. Because he got the throwing disease. Um, I feel like Royce Clayton played for the Astros, didn't he? Cardinals. Giants and Cardinals, where I remember him. I'm struggling God, here. Man. Catchers? Jim Tomey never played for the Astros, eh? No, that'd be a good uh, one. Okay, this oh has got. This cannot be. We might have to. Granky? I mean, Zach Granky is. Granky's going to be really high. Declan's right. Are there just Damn. not that many connections between the Astros and Dodgers? Did those two teams they they played each other in that crazy World Series? Yep. There. I feel like there was a crossover player or two. Dusty Baker was a longtime Dodger. I don't think he ever played for the Astros. He managed them, but I don't think he ever played for them. Hmm. Trying to remember the seventies. Feels like that's where there that's where there might be a treasure trove of guys. Mm -hmm. But I I, and they did play a one game playoff in eight. End of career situations. Like did Craig Biggio (laughs) retire in LA or something? Like Yeah, and, and he just bags. Yeah, he and Beggs, I think, spent their entire big league careers in Houston. Did Sheffield go to the Astros? No. Okay, I'm. I got nothing, man. I'm fan, this I'm is the first time I have here. totally blanked on a on a grid square. Uh, Enos Cabell Sticks. was a Greg Astros. Maddox. Uh? Greg Maddox. Wait, Greg Swindell. He pitched for the Astros. Okay. Right? Did he pitch for the the, the Dodgers? I have no <laughs> idea. I don't know. I'm what no about uh, Eric Gagne? Did he pitch for the Astros? I don't know. I think we might have to just give up. And it's a do shame. Zach Greinke. Grid's been so good, but I can't. I'm. That's okay. It, right, it happens. Let's do it. We still right. got a 49 rarity score. 36. 36 of it was Greinke. All, right, All right, right, let's. There's 92. You guys can't only see 92. The page. Only 92 players have only ever 92. played for the Astros and the All Dodgers. Right. All right, let's hear it. Big ones from a hitter's standpoint are... Carlos Beltran? I should have thrown him out earlier. Jeff it would have Kent. Been big. Oh, Jeff Kent yes. was a big one. Kiki Hernandez. Um, yeah. Kiki? That would have worked. Early, yeah. Luis Gonzalez. Yeah. Bobby Abreu. I, I, yeah. Luis oh, Gonzalez played for the Astros before he like blew up with the Diamondbacks. Yeah. And then probably... Bobby, yeah, Bobby Abreu. Abreu. I pray you. Uh, pitching wise, I'm trying to like see Octavio Detel. Uh, Here, I'm pulling it up too. Pitch for to them. Scott Casimir. Damn it, that would have been great. Don oh. Sutton. Jose. Oh, Lima. Where, where were you on Don Sutton? Sutton? Been good. Oh, Davy Lopes. Where were you on Davy Lopes? I remember oh, Davey man. Lopez in A. I saw him play at the Metrodome towards the Oh man. And... My one of my favorite players as a kid with the Cubs, Jose Vizcaino, would have worked here yeah, too. No. I don't know. There's there's Don certain Sutton corridors of the Lopes. National League that are just like They're very dark. They're it's very dark, dark, so they're dark and dangerous. Yeah. 
All right. All right. Speaking of dark and dangerous, uh, I got to go check my bracket here, boys. So, yep, I got some basketball on here right <laughs> right now. Love the phone. Thank you guys for helping us grow the Score North Twin Show. We're looking forward to the start of the actual season, and uh, we have another thing to announce next week: some bonus Twin Show content that we're going to fire up starting when the season starts. So, stay tuned. We'll see you guys after the weekend.